We are live with none other than Money B from the legendary rap group, Digital Underground. How you doing tonight, Money? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Um, so, first question I got for you tonight is, uh, what made you decide to get in, get into the music industry? Um, it was really just a, a love for the music growing up. Um, you know, my mother, my father, and even my grandmother, they, they, you know, I grew up with a lot of records being played around me. So I was, you know, there was always music played in the house and, um, you know, whatever was that, the, the hip new thing, you know, and my parents, they were, they were young when they had me, so they were, they were hip. So I just remember growing up around a bunch of, you know, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, Temptations, I Point of Fire, and, and just whatever the, the hot new music was. And then, um, you know, by the time I was uh, 10 years old or whatever, 79, and I heard Rapper's Delight, I was hooked. Um, and I just really just dove into the hip-hop. It, just, it was something that I connected to. And um, I would just listen to as much as I could get my hands on. And, and after a while, and I don't know how, you know, I've always been a creative person, but at some point I figured out that I could actually do it too, you know. And it just, it just happened organically. I didn't just one day decide I was going to do it. It kind of just, it was, it was in me. I grew up in it and around it. So it was just, that's what happened. So, I have to ask, and I think a lot of our listeners probably want to know this as well. Um, how did you get hooked up with the Digital Underground? Um, well, as you know, or don't know, Shaq Cheese originally, originally from the East Coast and um, by way of Florida. And, um, you know, me and Fuse, we were in the Bay Area. We had a group. Um, originally called it MGM, but Raw Fusion, it turned into Raw Fusion. But we were kind of gigging and shopping our demo around the Bay Area doing talent shows and whatnot. And like around 88, I believe, uh, Digital Shot G and Shot Master J at Digital Underground released Underwater Rocks. So they were promoting that record and doing some of the same shows that we were doing as we were trying to get a deal. And at the time, DJ Fuse was like one of the hottest DJs in the Bay, and Digital Underground needed a DJ. So, you know, we kind of made a deal that Fuse would DJ for them, and in return, they would kind of uh, work with us as a collective, Fuse and I. And I began just, you know, it started off with us all just doing shows together. And then it just musically kind of just grew. Um, so by 1989, when I was a full fledged member of the group, we recorded Do Let You Like. That was the first record that I appeared on in 1989. That's crazy, man. Um, speaking of records, one of my absolute favorite records is called uh, Sex Packets. And it's also your guys' debut album and most famous record. How did that album come to life, and what what's your favorite track off that album? Two tracks, and actually, Sex Packets is one of them. Um, I love that song, too. And uh, the other one is Freaks of the Industry. And the, the version of Freaks of the Industry that's on the record, Sex Packets, is actually the third version of the song that we did. Because the first two, well, the very first recording of, of Freaks of the Industry, we used the um, Diana Ross sample that couldn't be cleared because they thought we were insinuating having sex with Diana Ross. And then the second sample um, was a Tom Brown sample. I forget. Um, uh, Love Masquerade, I believe. And Tom Brown was a Jehovah's Witness, so he wouldn't clear his sample for any rap music. And we recorded the Donna Summers version, which is the version that's on the album, like right before.
before we left to go on our first European tour. And, uh, you know, at first, I was so used to hearing the, the first, the original version, which was a, was a much slower tempo, that I didn't think that people would like the version of Freaks and Industry. That's on the record. But when the record came out, people gravitated towards it, and that was really the first time that I got recognized for my voice on the record, really. You know, because people would see me and immediately go, I know your voice, it's from that record. So it's kind of like my favorite. And oh, also, also next year, 2020 will be the 30th year anniversary of Sex Packets. That's crazy, you know. Time flies, and I yeah. and I also tell a lot of people. A lot of people when I used to back in the day when I used to listen to Digital Underground. A lot of people used to ask me like, "Who's Money B?" And I would just say like, "You have a very distinctive voice." You know what I mean? A good but distinctive voice, so a lot of people could pick you right off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can't even disguise my voice; people know it right away. Um, I can't crank on nobody for sure <laughs> that knows me. Um, so in 1991, you and the rest of, of the Digital Underground, including Tupac, did a cameo spot in Dan Aykroyd's film called Nothing But Trouble. How did you guys land that role, and what was it like being on that set, being on the set of that movie? Um, we got the role of the movie, and it's kind of a trip because um, we weren't the first choice to be in the movie. I think they originally wanted De La Soul, and uh, De La Soul wasn't available, so we happened to be on the same label with De La Soul, Tommy Boy Records. So I think that, I'm not sure if it was Tom Silverman or whoever, suggested that he check out Digital Underground. So he actually came to one of our shows to see us. And he saw us perform, and he, he saw us perform, and he loved it. And um, he actually, you know, was excited after he saw us perform. He came backstage after the show, and he came and fired up a big joint, smoked smoked some weed with us and next thing you know we're on set um, um, but the, being on the set of that movie was incredible you know because we got to meet uh, John Candy um, Dan Aykroyd uh, uh, Bill Murphy is it Bill Murphy? No no it was, um, what's the other guy's name from Saturday Night Live that's in the movie it was uh, Chevy Chase he's really funny um we met a lot of the stars from the movie. We didn't meet Demi Moore because while we were there, they weren't shooting her scenes that day, whatever, for that week. But we, we got to meet everybody else, and everybody on set was really cool and inviting, and it was just a really great experience. Um, I have to ask one thing while we're still on the topic of nothing but trouble. Um, coming from a fellow Canadian, um, God bless John Candy's soul, but what was John Candy like when you met him? Was he a really nice guy? He was a really nice guy. He was funny. He hung out. He just kind of like, you know, he came on, introduced himself, and we hung out. Him and Chevy Chase was telling jokes and shit. It was real cool. It was just real laid back. Chilling. Um, you starred in the All Eyes on Me biopic as yourself. Um, what was it like reliving the scene where Tupac auditioned for you and Shock G? Was it a deja vu moment? And what was it like doing that movie? Uh, the movie was, was great, man. They, they, they really nailed it as far as recreating the actual scenes and locations that he was at, like some of the places. I was like, wow. But um, amazingly enough, so the, the scene that was more like a deja vu was the studio scene. We were in the studio recording um, with Pop. And uh, because they, they made the studio look almost exactly like Starlight Studios, the original studio when we recorded the first record. Um, the, the, the audition scene, when Tupac came and auditioned for us, um, in, in real life, he auditioned for Shot by himself. I wasn't at the original audition. But I guess for the movie's sake, they just wanted to always place us together to, to kind of land home the fact that it was Digital Underground. 
So that was a little, um, you know, liberty that they took as far as the facts of, 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 of Tupac's life. But, um, you know, they, they really nailed it as far as the clothing and, and, and shout out to Benny Boom and um, L.P. Hutton because I was a consultant on the film as well, at least for the scenes that I was in. So whenever I say, hey, that didn't happen that way, or, you know, I think it should be more like this, they were, they were, they were very open, they listened, and even Demetrius, um, Demetrius Ship Jr. that played Tupac, you know, he wanted to hear as many stories, and, and he worked really hard to get everything as right as he could if, if I suggested something or told him uh, a fun fact about Tupac, or, hey, Tupac moved like this, or he really did like this. He would, he would study and learn it and, and do it exactly the way that, you know, would, would be suggested. So I thought um, everybody did a great job on that movie. I thought it was, it was a good movie. Um, I think that a lot of people, you know, probably wanted more thinking they were going to find out something that they, they didn't know. But Tupac was such an open book, you know, he let everybody in on his entire, you know, he lived his life in front of, in front of the world. So, you know, it wasn't much that you were going to find out that Pac didn't already tell you while he was living it, you know. Most definitely. I remember um, my wife, me and my wife, we didn't have the movie playing here in our city. So me and my wife, we bought tickets for about uh, two cities away where it was playing. So we drove an hour and a half, uh, nine in the morning to catch the 11 a.m. Uh, premiere. And I remember, I didn't even know you were in the movie, right? So we were sitting there in the movie premiere, and all of a sudden when the piano thing came up with uh, when, you know, uh, Demetrius walked in, I sat up in the theater. I'm like, that's Money P! And, like, there was, like, two other people in the theater because it was, like, 11 in the morning, and they kind of just looked at me. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> uh, but it was a really yeah, good movie, man. I think you, you did really good on that, man. Um, it's a great movie. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'll tell you another funny story about that movie. So, you know, I played myself, and I remember the actress that played Layla Steinberg. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sitting in, you know, we're sitting in and getting, getting makeup done. And then she comes in, and she looks, she looks at me, and she goes, wow. They really get people that look just like it. <laughs> you look just like Money B. <laughs> oh, God. That's she's funny. Like, casting is incredible. She's like, they did a really great job for casting. Did, did you toy you with her for a little bit? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I played with her for a little bit. And then the, 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 the barber and whoever they come finally told her that it was really me. So it was funny. What was her impression, though, when she actually found that it really was you? Oh, she was shocked, and she started laughing. I was like, you yeah. <laughs> know, wow. That's funny. Um, so, uh, you and Digital Underground, we're going to go back a couple years here. Um, you and Digital Underground did a song with Tupac called I Get Around. Um, could Could you tell what? us a story? Can you tell us a story behind that and how it came to be? Sure. Um, that track was originally made to be a digital underground. It's for digital underground. So we had that track for a while, you know, everybody in the group. And we knew that it was a hit track, but nobody wanted to mess it up. So we really couldn't come up with the idea of what to do with it. And, um, at some point, I think Tupac, Call shot I was like, yo, my album, I need to turn my album in, you know, it's got to be done by October. This is like towards the end of the summer. And then Shock was like, well, I got this one beat that everybody likes, but we haven't done anything while you take it. So he gave him the beat. And, you know, amazingly, Tupac turns around and is like, hey, I want you guys on it. And um, he put us on the, on the, on the, on the track, and it's, it's, when I say it's crazy about that is because that, you know, we recorded it, it was released in 93, so we had it recorded in like 92 or something, right? And 
right around 93, that was, we did the body hat syndrome. And that was when, you know, we, the deal with Tommy Boy was over. And so you could almost say like that was, that was on the other side of when this young man had peaked. So we were sort of like starting to be on a decline or whatever. And that song, when it came out, it just kind of boosted us back up in the forefront. And it, and even to this day, it's one of the songs that, even though it's a Tupac song, it's one of the songs that we're most known for, that you hear, you know, currently being in rotation on just regular radio platforms. I'm going to have to say, you actually killed your, uh, your, your verse in that track, man. Absolutely killed it. Yeah, I mean, I actually told Pop that as well. And he was like, whatever. And I was like, well, I killed you in the song. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all he said back was like, whatever? Yeah, because, well, he had called me because, you know, he had already moved to L.A. at this time. And so he sent the track to me to go record it. And he was like, did you do your verse? And I was like, bro, I killed you on your whole song. He was like, whatever. <laughs> and then when he finally heard it, he got it back. I was like, you heard it? He was like, yeah, he was like, right. You know, that was our little competition thing. But never going to give it up. Um, so so lot, lot, I have one last Tupac question, and then we're going to move on from that topic and get more into you. Um, what's your fondest memory you share with Tupac? And if you can't think of one, could you just tell us a funny Tupac story? Um, my father's memory is just us being on tour, you know, like the Big Daddy K's and Public Enemy tours, and just being young and, you know, being a part of Tupac uh, realizing his dream, you know what I mean? So, like, I was present for a lot of, you know, First for Tupac, and, and, and I'm saying the things that he aspired to do. So, you know, we recorded his first record. You know, uh, we took him on his first tour. You know, and then when he got the rock stage, we, you know, he, you know, I was at the Juice. You know, we were at the, the audition for Juice when he got his first movie, and you know, and. Then, I, you know, I was in the recording sessions when he recorded Tupac Lips Now, which is his first record. So, all of these things that Tupac experienced for the first time, I was actually there to experience it with him. So, I got to see all of that. And, you know, at the same time, we were both realizing our dream. So, we were just young and, and it was just, we were having fun. Best way to do it, you know what I mean? Uh, memories are always going to live on, you know what I mean? Um, right. <laughs> so, back in 1998, the album Sex Packets was selected as one of the Source's 100 best rap albums ever. How does it feel knowing that you're part of one of the best records to ever grace hip-hop? Um, man, I, I just feel like, you know, I'm, I'm honored, and, um, you know, it's 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 kind of like it's it's all all I all I ever really wanted to do. You know, once once hip hop, once I fell in love with hip hop, and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. You know, I, I love and respect the culture so much. You know, I always wanted to to make some meaningful music, or music that would be respected. You know, I always wanted to add to the culture. So. The fact that it's recognized as one of the top 100, and you know we, you know we put out album, you know, and it was a multi-platinum selling album. Um, it was Grammy nominated. Um, you know, we've been a part of singles that still get played today. So I feel like I was able, and we were able to leave an impression and put our stamp on hip hop. You know what I mean? And that's something that, no matter what, you can never take away. You know what I mean? So even after I'm, I'm long gone, that music that we created will still be here. You know, it's forever. You know, because to this day, we do shows 
I get like young, um, you know, 18 year old kids coming up to me saying that their, their mom played this underground for them as a young kid and they love it. And I even have, I have my, one of my wife's friends, her son is, I think he's like 10 or 11 and she plays this underground for him. And, and she buys him the Digital Underground t-shirt to hear that, that that's my merchandise and he wears it to school. So I'm pretty sure when he's of age, he's gonna be a Digital Underground fan. You know what I mean? And just so on and so forth. Kind of like a Marvin Gaye or, or uh, the Rolling Stones or whoever, you know, the music will just live on. And I'm, and I'm proud of that, that I was able to be a part of something that, that will always be here. Most definitely. Just like uh, Shock G said in the song Humpty Dance, Humptiness forever. <laughs> yeah, um, Humptiness forever. Um, so, in 1999, you released your debut album called Talkin' Dirty. Um, how did that album come right. to be, and what made you decide to do a solo career? Um, uh, Talkin' Dirty album was an idea that me and my partner, Mike Pierce, Mike P. We had, because, you know, um, throughout my whole career, you know, Digital Underground, which is a collective. There's Raw Fusion, which was myself and Fuse, so it was always a, a, a what do you call it, a collective, or like, you know, it was always, it was always decisions by committee, right? So Fuse had to like the beat, or he'd make the beat, and then I'd you know, write to whatever he made or if he had an idea. And even before all of that, you know, I was in a group with uh, one of my lifelong friends back home. And we were a group. I had never just fully expressed my own idea. You know what I'm saying? So, at the time, I, you know, Mike was like, bro, you should, you should just do a Money B record. You never, he was like, you know, he even said it. He was like, you know, you were always one of my favorites in the group. And even with Raw Fusion, you know, it was really just you. But why don't you ever just do a Money B? You know, more people know Money B than they know Raw Fusion. Why don't you just do a Money B record? And I was like, you know what? You might be right. And then we just started working on it. And it was a, it was an album that was, that was, you know, funded. And released independently by myself with Mike Pearson, with Mike P. We put it out independently. And we just, you know, and it uh, involves a lot of uh, cats that I've worked with and, and are, I consider my musical family. I consider like Edie, Edie, Edie I mean, or Edie Dime from Outlaws, uh, Mystic, who's in Digital Underground, um, A Plus from Souls of Mischief. Um, Delinquents out of Oakland. Uh, who else was on that record? Mr. Mix from the Two Live Crew. Um, Four Racks from the Mechanics, who is, you know, that's like real Bay Area. You know, they run the Bay Area um, production scene right about now. Who, you know, they produce from everywhere from Two Shorty, Forty, Max Ready, Mozzie. Uh, uh, pardon? What'd you say? Oh, I said most definitely. Oh, I was agreeing no. with you. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, and a lot of, you know, and Shock G was on it, you know, basically involving my digital underground family and my Bay Area hip hop music family and just put this record together, which I thought was a really good record and, um, released it independently. And I'm going to most definitely say, um, if for any of our listeners that haven't listened to his, uh, you know, Talking Dirty album, make sure you guys check that out. Um, it's straight bangers from start to finish. You guys got to check that out. Um, you're, so you're the co-host of the Going Way Back show. How did that come to be, and uh, where can we watch it? Um, the Going Way Back show is basically... It started off as a podcast and then became a live streaming show. And the um, tagline for it is classic hip hop, raw and uncut. 
and it's really just about celebrating classic hip hop um, and and the artists that made the music. So, uh, and it came about kind of one of my, a good friend of mine, um, Danger One. You know, we would have conversations, and, and he knew about my vast collection of, of uh, classic hip hop that I had because really. Before I rapped, I really wanted to be a DJ. And so, from the time I first was able to go buy a, a record with my own money, when I was about 13 years old, I was a, a hip hop uh, vinyl collector. So I have just rows and rows of, of, of records. And, um, and I, I digitized a lot of them, and, and I had to set all these music he's like you need to share it so i created the going back show um in 20 that was in 2008 in 2013 we moved to live streaming and it was a um, you know we'd have guests on the show and you know do a lot of fun little um segments and whatnot it's and you know our show i kind of jokingly but not jokingly you know our show was the drink the drink champs before the drink champs. You know, same type of format. Get, get a lot of class artists. And we be drinking. And we just have fun. And when I have artists on my show, I would ask the questions that I've been wanting to ask since I was 14 years old, listening to them. So I didn't really have to do a lot of scripting. You know, these, the questions that I'll be asking and, and, and the dialogue and the conversation would just be coming from the heart. Because if, if, if I didn't grow up to them, a lot of them, for my peers that I've toured with and partied with and hung out with and, and they trust me to have a conversation about anything and I would, would never put them in a bad light. So it worked out. If you want to see clips from the show, I kind of I kind of put the show on hiatus around uh, 2017 or 2016 to work more on the Money Being Young Hump stuff. Um, but but you can see the archived episodes of the streaming at um, on YouTube at uh, Going Way Back Show. So if you just type in the Going Way Back Show, and that's G-O-I-N without the G, the Going Way Back Show, um, you can find archived episodes. And I've had, like, you know, everybody on there from Egyptian Lover to the Alcoholic to Brother J from the X-Clan to... Razzcast, Planet Asia, Freestyle. You know, and a lot of times when I have artists, I get on the Freestyle. And, you know, we just bug out and have fun. Um, I had Jerobe from Drive Call Quest with uh, Dinko D. I got a Freestyle session with Jerobe, me, Dinko D. Freestyle on the show. It's fine. That's crazy. I, I do want to say, when you said you just do it for the heart, just the questions you always wanted to ask individuals, uh, that's why I do this show. I just have a love for, you know, like people like yourself, Digital Underground and whatnot. So to me, this is kind of the same way you're doing your show, just because you wanted to talk to the people you grew up with, you know? Right. So, I, yeah, I get it. I mean, I'm... But I do have, I do have two more that's questions for you, if that's all right. Um, so when you sure. mentioned... Uh, Money B and Young Hump duo. Um, I have to ask, how did that come to be? Um, Young Hump was actually introduced to me by Shot G. And it started out as, you know, when Shot decided that he wanted to kind of take a break from doing live performances. And I wanted to continue to do performances. He was like, hey, you know, there's this guy, this young guy that I'm mentoring. Um, he could play, he's actually, he was mentoring him to audition to be in the um, All Eyes on Me movie. And he actually played Shakti and Huffy in the movie. Um, but he was like, you know, should go with this guy. And, you know, you guys can go out and do the show the way that you want to do it. It'll be cool. And at first, I was a little apprehensive. I didn't know if it was set up or what was going on. But I met him at an event, and we decided to give it a try. So after doing shows for a little while, you know, I found out that he actually was a dope MC anyway. And I was like, we should make, you know, let's work on some new records. And we started working on, on new records. And um, we actually 
actually did a song that I really like. Um, I'm not sure if you have it to play it, but it's uh, Come Here featuring Too Short. Um, it is produced by the Mechanics. Um, that's one that I'm really proud of that we've done, but we're actually going to release the full album this fall. So, Most definitely. I'm looking forward to that. Um, when you said it's gonna, when you said be cool, um, that's a, that's the next question and the last one I got for you. Um, you and Young Hump just okay. came out with a new single called "Be Cool." Uh, what is the inspiration right. behind that song, and where can our listeners buy a copy? Um, "Be Cool" is kind of just—it's just really the message to that song. It's just be cool, meaning like you don't have to be extra to get our attention. Just kind of—it's okay to just be yourself. You don't have to try to act like this or overly conversate and try to try to be in my face or tell me that you're doing this and that. You know, it's just you ever heard the expression, you know, you have to know how to how to uh, you know, you have to know how to move in a room. I don't know if that's an expression that you've ever heard. Meaning like Exactly I heard that in a room with if you're in a room with doctors, you know, just you should be able to be cool in a room full of doctors as well as in a room full of uh, hip-hop heads or, or a room full of women. You know what I mean? Just be cool, be yourself, and everything will work out. You don't have to try to act like this or that or overly overdo it and be extra with it. And we're just saying, like, you need to learn how to be cool. Just be cool, baby. You know what I mean? Just relax, and it'll be all good. And, you know, it's it's on all platforms. It's on Spotify, uh, Tidal, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Anywhere that you can buy digital music, it's there. It's called Be Cool by Money B and Young Hub. It's out there. Um, if it's okay if I can add one question. When you said um, the song Come Here, um, I actually have that song in rotation for tonight. I was just wondering... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play that directly after our interview since it's one of your favorites. Would you be able to just tell our listeners um a little bit about it that way they can get it, wrap their head more around the song when they listen to it? Yeah, so "Come Here" is a song uh, "Money Being Young" Hump featuring Too Short and Four Rax. Four Rax is from the Mechanics who actually produced the track. Now, I love that song because um, when I got the track from the mechanics, it's like a real club. It has a real Bay Area sound to it, right? But it's, it's so club. It just sounded really good to me. And I think Young Hump was like, you know who be really cool on this? He's like, Too Short. And I was like, I'm going to play it for him. Now, I've known Too Short for, you know, at least 25 years, you know, closer to 30. And I've, I've done little ad-libs and little extra parts on some of those records, but we've never actually done a record together, right? And I went to a studio and I was just playing them songs we were working on, and I played them that one. I was like, what you think about this? He's like, uh, he's like, he, he felt the same way. And too Short is, is notoriously known for sitting on music, meaning like if he's doing a, a track with you or you can even be paying him, like, you know, he'll take a month if he, you know, because he's so busy, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So Too Short is really, you know, he, he's popping, he's Too Short. So he was like, um, he was like, man, I got to go to uh, Miami something something. And he was like, check back with me. Thursday or next Thursday or whatever it was and I'm thinking like and I was like cool because I expected them you know to maybe in, in, in the next couple of weeks or whatever you know, and I probably have to ask him a few times I checked in with him Thursday and he had the record done damn <laughs> it's not bad man so the shit just just came together so that's the epitome of a super a super Bay Area collaboration, you know, the mechanics who are the sound of the Bay Area when it comes to production. Too short is the godfather of, of disruption and 
you know, Money B from Digital Underground. And Young Hub, who's actually from L.A., but he's, he's, a, he's an adopted son to the Bears. So, you know, Come Here is, is a record that I just really like. And the video is off the chain, if you ever see it. Oh, I checked out the video. I love it. <laughs> Most definitely. Word. Um, so, Money, this is the time I give, uh, at the very end of the interview, I give the um, uh, the chance for the person that comes on the show to give uh, shout-outs or thanks to whoever they want to give shout-outs to, and also their social media handles. That way, if people are just tuning in and just hearing you now, um, they could actually follow your journey. Well, um, so, you know, I'm on Instagram. DJ Hallway, so I believe you want to interview as well. Uh, tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, Clean is back. Digital Underground. Um, just the whole Digital Underground family, obviously. Um, out of sight, so who's our management, and just, you know, and everybody around the world for supporting us. If you want to if you wanna know more about the movement or just kind of stay in tune with what we're doing and where we're at, because um, I hope to get out there um, there's been talks of us coming to Canada really soon, so I'll have to get out there really soon. But, uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, mostly Instagram, at moneyb69, like the position, at moneyb69. Um, young Hup is Young Hup DU, spelled correctly, Young Hup DU. On uh, Facebook, it's, you can follow the Digital Underground fan page, or you can follow Money B fan page. Most definitely. Fingers yeah. crossed that you guys come to Ontario, because I would love to see a DU show, most definitely. That would be great. Do you want to hear something crazy? Where I live, um, there's a city that's like 20 minutes away from me called Ontario. That's where the airport is. Ontario, California. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. I'm in uh, Prescott, Ontario, a little yeah. small town of like 4,000 people, so... <laughs> That's what's up. Hopefully fly out of Ontario and come to my Ontario. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much, yeah, Monty B. Great. Thank you so much for coming up okay. on the air, man. It was an amazing experience. Um, hopeful, hopefully down the road I get to interview you again. Okay, absolutely. Have yourself a wonderful night. God bless, bro. All right, thank you.